Okay, we're just going to kind of do a, a shorter version tonight, and um, th then what I do is I usually have all my staff, um, I have different levels of staff, and uh, some of the staff is actually, they're teenagers, but I'm training them to take over war Warrior Notes. So I have, I have meetings with them, I train them, and we have business meetings, and I talk to them and train them so that they will take over Warrior Notes. And I have my upper staff that I tr I've trained, but I'm going to take care of it for, for many generations after this because I don't know when the Lord's going to come back, but I'm going to make sure that Warrior Notes last forever. And so I've done that financially. I've done that also logistically. I've done that uh, in, in the management. So these kids, these, these kids are being trained. I have, I have junior pilots. I'm training them because someday they're going to be my first officer. So I train them. I put them through courses and classes. I take them to the airplane. I let them program in the flight path. Because I have to hand this off. I'm not going to let this ministry just die in this generation like all these ministries do. You've got to have a handoff. And you've got to start 20, 30 years prior. Right? So they're, they're, they're being trained. They're, we, we just, our last meeting, we talked about dealing with difficult people. That was a good one. Amen. Why, why do we, we neglect the teenagers? They should be trained. You should see these kids. They can get in the jet and, and, and plug in stuff. I put them in the simulator. They can fly. Not that one, a really nice one. See, you got to start thinking this way. This is the way it was in Bible times. The father always handed off the business and trained them and set them up. You know, what has happened to us? Amen. So anyway, you, you, you know all the answers to those questions. But um, we lead by example, and I feel like um, people need to start businesses. They need to find out what God is telling them and, and anticipate the needs of the people. You can have a successful business just by anticipating the needs. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go over a couple of scriptures with you, and then I'm going to have my staff come up as the Lord leads and um, share whatever the Lord's telling them to share because they got to take this thing over. It's not going to be just Kevin from heaven, you know. So Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. So we're going we're gonna to give you some scriptural support and, and show the importance of words here. And I just want to wrap this up. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be uh, talking in the morning about speaking to your mountains. And we'll finish it up. And then um, we're going to cut a kind of, it's just going to be a shorter service tomorrow morning. Shorter service here is an hour and a half, you know, so... That's pretty, yeah. All right, and then we're going to fly out. Uh, every one of us are going to be splitting off and going places. Thank you so much. No mermaid. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Say no to the mermaid. <laughs> All right. Ecclesiastes 10.12 says, Wise words bring approval... But fools are destroyed by their own words. That's a good one. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs 4, 5 says, Get wisdom and develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. John 15, 7 says, But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask what anything that you wish. Anything you want what it says and it will be granted wow you see so hard we've we've slipped so far haven't we? you know when's the last time you heard a good faith sermon you know if you ask you can ask what you will all right psalms 119 130 says the teaching of your word gives light 
so even the simple can understand. Job 23, 12 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, oh wait, excuse me. Job 23, 12 says, I have not departed from his commands, but have treasured his words more than daily food. Do you crave God's word like that? Do you crave him? I do, and I know you do. Um, Psalms 19, 14 says, May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is a good one. Proverbs 10, 19 says, Too much talk leads to sin, but sensible and, and but the sensible keep their mouths shut. <laughs> See la. <laughs> Proverbs 18, 8 says, Rumors are, are dainty morsels that, that sink deep into one's heart. That's good. Proverbs 4, 20, there's, there's about 16 pages of these, so I'm not going to read them all. But I always overdo it. But there's so many scriptures on, on words. It's very important. So, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. That's Proverbs 4, 20 and 21. Um, Proverbs 1, 23 says, Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. Matthew 6, 7 says, When you pray, don't babble on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Sounds like a movement that I had, was involved with recently. Matthew 6, 7. <laughs> I was actually taught, if you do it like 500 times, you'll wear God out and he'll give it to you. I was literally told that. <laughs> that doesn't sound like relationship to me, does it? Okay. Ezekiel 12, 28 says, Therefore tell them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, no more delay. I will now do everything I have said, says the Lord. Proverbs 10, 32 says, The lips of the godly speak helpful words, but the mouth of the wicked speaks perverse words. Let my teaching fall on you like rain. Let my speech settle like dew. Let my words fall like rain and on the tender grass, like gentle showers on young plants. Deuteronomy 32, 2. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7 says, And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to the commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children, Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. We're only on page one. We still have 15 more pages to go. But this is, this is my point is we have learned this weekend from James and uh, from the Gospels, and we've, we've talked about words, we've talked about the importance of word. We, we know that we have to choose to speak and choose not to speak. It's just as much uh, of a choice to not speak. And I love, as I've gotten older, to just look at somebody and not say anything because I don't answer a fool according to their folly, own folly. I don't answer a fool. I don't argue. I don't even have discussions about theology. I come, I teach, I go home. And when I get home, I stay home until I have to go out again. I say very little. I choose my words from, and I'm, I think that something happens as you get older. <laughs> like I think you get smarter. I know my dad got smarter. He used to be really dumb, and then he got smart. He didn't change, I did. 
my dad was trying to help me in a lot of ways, and I didn't listen to him. And the Father God is our Father. He's wanting to tell us things. But the things that he is saying are things beyond what we know. He's going to tell us things that we know not. One of the things I noticed is that God doesn't push himself on us. But he's ready for us if we ask. About eight years ago, I was just going to work every day. Kathy was going to work every day. No pulpit, no nothing. No invites, no books, nothing. And this is what I said to the Lord. I said, Lord, you've invested so much in me. I said, I just know that you're not going to just let my fruit rot. You're going to use me. You're going to have me distributed. You're going to distribute me. You're not going to waste all this you've invested in me. And he told me to write that first book. I waited almost 20 years. It was so personal to me. But he said, it's a mandate. And so I wrote it. At that point, after I wrote it and I published it myself, a semi came in our neighborhood and dumped off the books that we ordered, that we paid for ourselves. We had pallets in our driveway because the Lord said, I'm going to distribute you. No invites, nothing. I, I was laughing. We were laughing at the guy and we were laughing at our neighbors because they were like, what is this guy doing? And the guy was like, well, so you're an author. I go, yeah, right now I am. I just became one. And he's dumping off all these pallets. And he's like, so what are you going to do with these? I don't know. <laughs> I spent so much of our own money. We bought a TV camera. Me, Kathy and I worked extra. We bought a TV camera. And it just sat in a box for a year. I didn't know how to turn it on. <laughs> So we asked somebody, can you come and turn it on for us and set it up? And I'll sit in front of my fireplace. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> as soon as that camera red light would come on, I would start talking. And as soon as it turned off, I would stop talking. I did so much and saw nothing happen. And then one day, I got asked to come to TBN. And then from there, one of my staff saw me on TBN and said to Sid Roth, this guy is for real. And I got on Sid Roth. This all happened without me helping God. I just was obedient. So don't let God ever lose what he wants to do through you. Don't let him lose that. Don't let it sit and rot. Believe God. I said, Lord, you want to distribute me. I know you want to use me. You invested this visitation. You told me that I was going to be sent back and that you were going to use me to tell people what it was like to be with you up in heaven. And so it's happened. It's been seven years now. 40,000 students, all of, all of them are lit up. So now I come to Oak City and I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that there's a flow coming from this, this room that is supernatural. It is not because of me. It's not because of you. It's because God is good. And I'm telling you by the Spirit, you can do this. You can do this life. You can do this life by doing something for someone else that can't pay you back.
when I was up there, he showed me that angels are assigned to everybody, but he said the angels up for children, they report. Every angel reports to the Father. Jesus said, don't harm or touch wrongly any of these children because their angels always see the face of their Father in heaven. And so he told me the key, the secret to favor is what you just saw. You minister to children and you get reported. That is the secret to this ministry. The flow of provision is beyond your belief. Because all those angels of all those children just reported us. And there is no way that anybody's gonna stop what God's gonna do for warrior notes because of it. Not anybody. Okay, the same thing with the single moms, single dads. We got right here. Hey, Sadie. We took them for a ride on Warrior Jet. We treated them all weekend. My guess. <laughs> single mom and a daughter. Took them to dinner. Took them on Warrior Jet. We went up to Tulsa and back. Stopped and got some snacks and came back. And I do that every single trip. I pick a single mom, single dad, and their children, and I go pick them up. I bring them to the hotel, and they treat them the whole weekend. They get, a, they get their room paid for, all their meals. No, that's what the jet's for. It's called a mercy flight. On Friday morning, all the pilots showed up, and we taught the kids ground school, and then we flew an air show for them. Oh yeah, that's what God wants us to do for this next generation. That's what he's wanting us to do now. So God is, is dealing with a lot of you that you have something that he wants. It's not your money, so just relax. We already took the offering. What he wants is the part of you that he placed in you before you were born. There's, there's giftings inside of you. You have to find out what this is. So the Lord said to me, because everybody comes out with their prophetic word for each year, right? So I, I didn't have one, because so, I'm nonprofit. But I got one. The Lord said to me, tell all the ministers, tell all the ministries that they're going back to work. They're gonna get a job. I didn't get on TV for that. <laughs> but that's what the Lord said. What he said to do is, is get back in the marketplace around people and have compassion on people. Get a job and smell like a sheep. He also told me that every minister must donate their talent to a single parent. So if they can, if they can do roofing, if they can do electricity, if they can do plumbing, if they can do air conditioning, whatever it is, is you get your tool belt out and you donate every month a certain amount of hours for free. The Lord is calling everyone to do that. Why does it always have to be money? Why can't it be three hours of your time a month where you go and mow somebody's grass or you fix their roof or you, I'm just telling you, that's what the Lord told me. That's what 2024 is, is go back to work. In other words, go take your talents and get your tool belt or whatever. I've told my staff, all my, most of my staff are contractors. And I said, well, put, bring your tool belt up because you're, we're going to go to people's houses and we're going to do whatever they need done. We're going to paint, we're going to repair, we're going to start this ministry all over the world. I'm going back to work. I'm going back to work. I can make more in a day than I did a month at Southwest Airlines, being a pilot. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate, I'm going to take my, my time, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a salary from the world.
Kathy doesn't have to go back to work, but I will. I'm serious. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I got. I got Gulfstream. I got a Gulfstream rating. Gulfstream pilots make good money. It's a big airplane. It goes 14, 15 hours before it has to land. I have my. I have the phenoms. I'm going to go back to work and let the world pay for my salary. And I'm going to donate some of my 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 wages to single parents. I ju- I did that last year when I was in training. I actually flew charter company and I donated every month I donated my pay to a single mom and I was still writing books coming and doing all the spirit schools I didn't charge warrior notes for flying it's time to think out of the box I'm telling you if you if you will do this if you will mow somebody's lawn Let me tell you something. I live on a golf course. I've always lived on a golf course. All three houses, don't worry about it, it wasn't during ministry. It was before ministry. We actually paid for it ourselves. But every house has been on a golf course. I'm, I'm, the golf course I'm on right now, I watched them tee off from my backyard. Do you realize in, let's see, since 2013, it's been 10 years, in 10 years, watching golfers I've only heard two people actually connect when they teed off and I know that sound because I've always lived on a golf course and I know that sound it's the Tiger Woods sound when it is perfect twice and I want to go out there and say I suggest that you use your Saturdays. Come with me, and I'll do ground school at the airport, and you can help me around the airplanes. Or I'll give you a tool belt. I think you should probably spend your Saturday mornings helping somebody paint their house because golf is not for you. <laughs> so think about it. Tw- only twice, you know, because I watch the pros all the time, just like you do, and I know that connection. My suggestion is if you can't do it more than twice a week, you're never going to get any better. I mean, that is just the fact. Anything you want to do, if you do it once, you don't go anywhere. Twice, maybe a little improvement. It it takes the three times. The professionals do it six times a week, six days a week, and they improve. But if you don't play, and if you don't do something more than three times a week, you don't improve. You're going to find this out. In fact, Jesus is going to play this film for you that you just heard when you get to heaven. Because he's going to show you how you can affect people. And tonight, you're, you're going to have to choose what you're going to do with your time from now on. Time is more expensive than money. Sorry I'm being so hard, but this is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He's saying that we've got to be mindful that one day we will stand before him and we'll give an account for what we did with what we have. Not what we don't have, but what we have. Not what your neighbor has, but what you have. I know this to be a fact because I've already been there. I've already been told this. And I was sent back to give this message out that I'm teaching. Is that we are effective by what we do for others. There's no way you can fail if you do something for someone else. I'll tell you how you do it. This is what I did. For 30 years at Southwest Airlines, I could have been a pilot. I could have flown the airplane I was on. But God told me to be a flight attendant. I did it for 30 years. What I would do is I would go buy at least 12 hamburgers and I would hand them out to homeless people and then I would go back to my room and fast. I would fast while I was handing out hamburgers. I would not eat. I would give my food away and go back to my room and say, okay. I knew, I called it Joseph's Pit. 
My job at Southwest Airlines was Joseph's pit. I called it that. I said, you know what? It's just a matter of time before I get promoted. And so I'm going to make it. I'm going to leverage myself. I'm going to double down. I'm going to sow, and I'm not going to eat. And I'm going to sow my food. So I only ate one meal a day. I started that in college after I got saved, and I, I had so much progress that I just ate one meal a day. And now I can look at food and gain weight <laughs> because I've only had one meal a day usually. Now, I actually eat more on the road because I need that energy, and plus we got to fly tomorrow. i got to fly back to Texas in a fighter jet, and then I gotta, they're going to stop and get me in my other airplane, and I'm going to fly home with our other airplane because we've got to take the fighter jet back. So I eat more on the road because I, I need that. But what I'm saying to you is, is if you want the heavens to open up, you've got to do something that gets God's attention. And what gets God's attention is when you deny yourself and you do it for someone else. My dad was a professional saxophone player for 68 years. He never let me touch his saxophone. He could not afford to buy me a little drum pad. He never bought me anything. He never let me touch his saxophone. He never showed me how to play because he couldn't afford it. He watched me order a saxophone on Amazon after I came back from heaven. He watched me take it out. He watched me play it. He goes, it took me a year to get a sound out of a, that saxophone and you did it out of the box. I said, well, I'm gonna make an album. So I made an album and before he died, he sat there every day before he passed away crying and he said, there's no way, that is God. I got on billboard, billboard charts. I was charted on billboard charts. I did the whole album myself just to prove that it's not me. I did all the instruments. What's it called? Victory? Yeah, victory. victory. The album Victory. They call me. They call, billboard called me from New York and they said, you're charted on Monday. You're number seven on billboard charts. I said, who is this? <laughs> so I had my staff call. I said, We're, hang up, We're gonna call, give me the number to call back. <laughs> Billboard charts, may I help you? I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And sure enough, I have the photo of it on, on the ch it's charted. The reason I'm saying this is because I'm not this good. What I'm trying to tell you is, what is it that God has inside of you already that's hidden that he wants you to do? You do it by denying yourself and you're doing it for someone else. So if you want somebody to pray for you, you pray for them. I wish you could feel what I feel right now because I feel the powers of the coming age. I feel the millennial reign of Christ on me. I feel like I'm already in the thousand year reign. I feel like I'm in the city of David on Mount Zion among those whose spirits have been made righteous standing on Mount Zion with the spirits of men made righteous by the power of God. I've tasted of the, the powers of the coming age. I've seen my Lord, your Lord. I've heard him speak. We saw him, Kathy and I both saw him in a vision coming back. He was on his horse. He had this huge crown. His eyes, there were beams of light coming out and hitting us. There were so many saints with him. There were angels, there were all kinds of beings. And there was this big gold crown with all these jewels that he had on it. And his eyes were fire and they were like laser beams. He was coming back for us in full authority. <laughs> if you want God to move in your life, move in someone else's life. Amen? When we would go to church, I would never go to church to get a word. I never went to church for anything. When we would go to church, I would pray. 
I would pray in tongues until I got a word for somebody. I would get a word sometimes, I wouldn't know who it was for. It was a big church, and I would pray. I would pray in tongues. I, I pray in tongues until I got a word, and then I said, Kathy, I, and I need $10. Every time I went to church, I had $10. That's all I could afford, and I gave it to somebody. I, I did, sometimes it was in the parking lot on the way back home. But I had a word, and I had $10 in my pocket, and I sewed it every single time. I never went to church to get anything. I went to church to give. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the secrets of how to get this thing moving in your life. This is life. This is, this is about other people. Jesus spoke to me face to face, and he said, it's about other people. You got to make other people's dreams come true. You got to encourage people so that they are further ahead than you. They got to finish better than you. You got to look at it as I want everyone to have what I want. I want everyone to finish their race better than me. I want all of you to exceed me. The only way I can do that is sacrifice my life for you. The only way I can do is lay it down. Everything I say to you is to encourage you of God's power and his goodness. It's not to brag. I don't consider anything that I have mine. I don't consider myself good enough to run warrior notes. And that's why I have warrior notes. It's because I'm not good enough to run it. God told me I'm perfect for the job because I don't think I can do it. That's what he told me. He said, you're perfect. I said, but I can't do it. He says, you're perfect. You're perfect for it. In, in our weaknesses, he becomes strong, right? Okay, so it's 8.30. That's when I was going to quit. I have 30 seconds. So I'm going to pray for you. We have heard the word of God. We have studied the word of God. We've done so many sessions. You've been ministered to. The power of God is here. Why don't we agree as touching one thing? Let's agree that something supernatural happens in this country. You know what, you know what I feel like? Uh, remember, remember on Friday we had to go through all that weather and we popped up through the weather in the air show. We had to go up over, come back around. Remember the, the sun was just shining. It was so hot. It was like stormy and dark and we popped through the cause and it's like, and I felt the heat. I felt the heat in my helmet from the sun. And it's like raining and stormy, but we, we knew that it was clear enough, so I thought, let's just take off. We, we agreed, let's just take off. We'll do a, a, a flight plan that's for IFR, but we'll, then we'll get, it'll clear up, and then we can do our show. And that's what I feel right now. I feel like the heavens are open up in here, and I feel the heat on my forehead. I got a lot of skin showing up there. <laughs> and I feel the glory of God right now. I feel like God has, is honoring the church. He's answered our prayers. He's, he's come. Do you realize that YouTube pays my salary? My channel pays my salary and her salary. It's hilarious. So when people complain about the commercial, I go, thank you for watching the commercials. <laughs> Did you ever think that the devil could pay your salary? Do you realize that Southwest Airlines paid my missionary salary for 30 years to feed the poor on every street in America, every city? I went out and witnessed and fed people, and Southwest Airlines paid for it. They paid my airfare, too. <laughs> I am so thankful for YouTube. I'm so thankful for Facebook. I love the IRS. I give to them every month. I, I, I love the CIA. I do. They, 
they spy on me because they have my best interests at heart. I love the DIA, the NSA, the TSA. You see, God wants to do something, and he wants to do it in a way that completely confounds the wise. It completely confounds them, the world. He wants to glorify himself. He wants to use you, but he wants the credit for everything. He just needs a couple people that'll say yes and be crazy. So I, I have my staff. They're, they're my crazy friends. I have a lot of them here. So you're going to hear a lot of testimonies. You're going to hear a lot of words of the Lord. And um, so I'm going to pick the one that is least interested in speaking tonight, which is Abby. <laughs> Abigail, my favorite speaker. Hi, Abby, you are hiding under the table. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, she was hiding under the table. <laughs> okay, so Abby is like the most amazing person and speaker. It's Pastor Mike's um, daughter. He's got um, amazing women of God, a whole quiver full. So all you ladies, come on up, you know, everybody. And Jamie. We'll start with them. They're called the cherubs. I call them the cherubs. Abby, microphone. She likes it warmed up, so warm it up. There we go. Abby, thank you for sharing. Isn't, give, isn't she amazing? Okay. All right. Let, let, them, let them have the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, something that was really in my heart is just breaking off such a bad spirit of suicide. And I know there are so many people in here that have, it's waved over them, and I just wanna tell you how demonic that is and how far off from the goodness of God is. I know I've dealt with suicide, and so if anybody in here is dealing with suicide, let's just pray right now, let's pray in the spirit, Lord. Lord, any spirit of suicide, Lord, break it in Jesus' name, Lord. You have such a wonderful book written about their lives in heaven, Lord. And Lord, if they feel like they've made a mistake that is too big for you, that is wrong. If you ever have made such a bad mistake that you turn to the Lord and you're like, I don't know what to do, I just want to tell you the Lord has already forgiven. He, his plan is so far beyond that one mistake you made. And even if it keeps happening, if you come to the Lord and you are ready and you are ready to move on the lord is going to forgive you so if you're dealing with suicide i break that in jesus name because the lord is going to take that away and you are going to flourish because his book is already written i'm ready I just want to pray for brain fog and dullness and emotions. Um, so I got a verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 through 28. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for coming of our master, Jesus Christ. So if you feel that dullness and emotion where you just can't feel anything, and I've been through that too, or just brain fog where you try to focus and you just can't do that, that's what I want to pray for. So, Lord, I just pray for your people right now. Lord, I pray that you are with them and you will help them to breathe again and feel emotion again, Lord. I thank you that they're going to have dreams and visions again, Lord, that when they say, oh, I always wanted to do this, well, now you're going to be able to do this. And Lord, I just thank you that they're going to have new businesses, like Kevin says, and that now they'll be able to feel like themselves again, Lord, and only you can do that. And I thank you that you are with them and you've never left them. And I thank you that they will run and leap and have such joy, such joy, such joy, because they are your people, Father. And I thank you 
that you have shown them your face and your eyes and you burn that dullness of emotion with the fire in your eyes in Jesus' name. Well, this is definitely a confirming word from my sisters, but I kind of have a two-parter. The first part is that many of you have come up to us and said, you know, thank you for sharing and it's so good. And we so appreciate hearing that. But I just want to tell you that we are literally nothing without the Spirit of God. And five seconds ago, most of us had nothing to say. So it's all spirit. This is nothing that we are doing. This is nothing about us. It's not about us. It's the spirit moving through us. And that's the only way that any of us have anything to say. So as my precursor, now the, the real thing, um, I just felt like there are things that we have accepted um, that's not God, and we know it's not, but it's just such a part of our daily life. They're like, oh, that's just how I am. And there were three things specifically that I felt. One, depression, which they've already prayed for. Two is anxiety, anxious thoughts, fearful thoughts. Oh, that's just how I am. Uh, I'm just worrisome. You know, I'm just a fearful person. That's just how I am. And the last one was like migraines and headaches. Um, so if you just have like a constant headache, but you're just feeling like that's just how I am, that's just how my body is, no, wrong. We are getting rid of that today. And God has something better for you. He really, really does. And we don't have to accept that, but we accept it because we're like, well, I'm not in sin and I'm doing the right stuff and I don't have this big disease. No, he wants you to be whole, full wholeness. And if you are dealing with this stuff in your emotions and in your head, you're not able to go all the way. So Father, we just thank you that as my sisters prayed that depression is going, that anxiety is going, fearful thoughts are going. And if that is a manifestation in headaches, we just bind that all physical symptoms of depression and anxiety. We say, go now in Jesus name migraine headaches go now in Jesus name restore our bodies to the way you would have them in heaven there is no depression in heaven there is no anxiety in heaven and there is no headaches in heaven and we just thank you for restoring our bodies in Jesus name amen so Becca literally just said exactly what I was going to say but I have a little bit more in the testimony as well but I'll be fast I promise so Years ago, I dealt with anxiety and panic attacks, like maybe three or four a day. Could not figure it out, but um, I figured out later that it's just a tormenting spirit. And I feel like that's a lot of like revelation for people, is that you just do not understand why you're going through something like that. And I realized later what Kevin was, he said something, and I was like, Oh my gosh, it was a demon. I did not understand. I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought I had to go like take medicine or something, but no, it was just the devil, okay? And so I, I got deliverance and I was okay, but I realized that it was just, it was this spirit that was coming over me and like choking me. Like, like the Lord showed me in a vision, like I was at school one day and there, there was a spirit literally had his hands around my neck choking me and I could not breathe and I felt so like I couldn't catch my breath all the time and it was just that tormenting spirit so I want to break that off of anyone that's going through anything like that you don't understand something going on with your body physically or just your mind like you just don't understand why maybe you have these intrusive thoughts anything like that we're just going to break that off right now so just receive it so Lord I thank you that you are going into all of these wonderful people's lives and you're taking off that tormenting spirit in Jesus name and we all corporately agree that all of these tormenting spirits are gone in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus over all of your children, Lord. All of your children are set free in Jesus' name. You tormenting spirits are gone in Jesus' name. You have no place here. You get your hands off of these children in Jesus' name. Well, alrighty then. Um, I just want to talk about brokenness and break off the spirit of brokenness. Um, 
a lot of people feel like they're too broken. They're too broken to start their own business. They're too broken to start a family. They're too broken to have a relationship. And that is just not, not true at all. And that is not from God. And I feel like so many people have so many cracks and so many burdens that they're carrying in their heart and they're filling it with so many things from the world whether it's um, um, drugs, alcohol, um, relationships that that is not from the Lord and we have got to stop filling our hearts with things of the the world and fill our hearts with things from the Holy Spirit and things from the Bible and things from the Word. And so I just want to encourage everybody that you are not broken in the eyes of God. You are not broken in the eyes of the Creator and you are created by God. And so right now I just want to break off every spirit of rejection, spirit of brokenness right now in the name of Jesus. You are not broken. You will not be broken in heaven and you are not broken on this earth. Father, I pray that you would just fill everyone's hearts with the peace and the love of God, Lord, that they would know that they are created in your image, Lord, and that they would know that they are never too broken for you, that they are never too broken for a new relationship, they are never too broken for this world, Lord, that they can do incredible and mighty things, and that there is a book in heaven with their name on it, Lord, and that I would just pray the blood of Jesus over everyone's hearts right now, and that you would fill the void in their hearts, Lord, and that they would lay the burdens on the cross, the feet of Jesus, Lord, because you took every burden on the cross. You took every broken thing from every piece of their heart on the cross, Lord, and I just speak a blessing over everyone, Lord, that they would know that they don't have to be broken anymore, that you will fill their hearts, and that you will take every piece of brokenness away from them, and they don't have to feel like this anymore because you are God and you touch our hearts every single day if you just give him your yes. And I just want to encourage everybody, if you just give God your yes, your whole life will transform. I did, I did not realize that until like a year ago. And I gave God my yes. I gave God every single piece of me, every single piece of my heart, and he filled every single broken piece in my heart and every single void that I had. He took every single burden off my back, and I felt so free, and it was like a backpack of weights had just been taken off my back the second that I said, God, I give you my yes. I give you every single part of me, and if you just do that, your entire life will literally transform overnight. All right, I feel like the Lord's telling me that everything they're going through down here, it's only temporary. And when you get to heaven, it's all going to pass away, right? So when you're down here, don't worry, because this, this time on earth is only small compared to what we experience in eternity. Okay? So, like, a anything that you're going through right now, it doesn't matter because it's all going to pass away and you're going to get rewards for it in heaven. Okay? And everything that you give, give up, you're going to get back, all right? Because, like, a couple years ago, I was set up for to go to a university and everything and I had to give that up and go to a place where it was just me and the Lord and absolutely no, nothing else all right and because I said yes this is where the Lord has brought me so saying yes is super important and God will help you with it just remember that what, what you're experiencing now it's only temporary so don't worry about it if you say yes, God's with you, and you have to fear nothing, all right? God will always be with you, no matter what. As long as you yield to him, he will stay faithful as long as you stay faithful, all right? Shalom. So lately, the Lord has been putting Proverbs chapter 8 in my heart, and a specific verse he put last night was Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17, and it says in the Passion Translation that I will show my love to those who passionately love me, for they will search and search continually until they find me. And so last night, Dr. Kevin was sharing about from the book of James of being a self-feeder. And so that one word that stuck out to me in that verse was find and then there's self-feeder. So both of those words 
have something to do with action. You find the Lord by putting to action because you're diligent in seeking him. And then to be a self-feeder, you put into action as well because you're also diligent in seeking him. And I also like how it says it in the Amplified Classic because it has like backup scriptures that backs it up basically. And so um, continue to seek the Lord forever. God is so good. Shalom, shalom. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord's been putting it on my heart, this phrase, uh, faithful and true. I am faithful and true. I am faithful and true. And it's in, there's a scripture in Revelation about it where Jesus comes back on the white horse and faithful and true. And I was going to look up everything about faithful and true, but I ran out of time during worship because I was worshiping. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I was going to look up everything that said what God is faithful. Every time it says faithful, I was going to look up everything that said God was true. And then I thought about, wait, the whole book is faithful and true. Everything in the Bible is faithful and true. And so I didn't have to memorize every scripture in my mind and be like, okay, I'm going to apply it now. I could just say, God, your word is what I'm applying from the beginning to the end. So God is the God of faithfulness and truth. And we learned everything that he can help us when we're going through brokenness and heartbreak and depression, that he can faithfully take us through that. He can help us become the victor and no longer the victim of a situation. He can turn the blind to be seen again. He can make the mute speak. He can heal anything that you need to be healed of. And so I'm just praying over every run right now that if there's some situation, whatever the circumstances may be in your life, that you can say, God, you're the God of faithfulness and truth. And your word says that, and I'm going to stand on that. I'm not going to look left or right, but I'm going to look straight into the, what the word says. And the word says that you are faithful and you are true. And I believe it, and I'm going to go with it. So yes, God, you are faithful and true. I want the F-18 pilot to talk. Chris, what do you got? Well, it may not surprise you when I talk about warfare. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so the name of the ministry is Warrior Notes. Last night we were singing, the team was singing about waging war. Zephaniah 317, the Lord is a mighty warrior. So if we think about who our commander is, <clears throat> the churchy church the pastors in the skinny jeans and man scarves, which drive me crazy. <laughs> they, they, want, they want us to think that our commander is a shampoo model, <laughs> right? You think of the, the, the paintings of Jesus with his long flowing hair. He looks European. He's got a little baby lamb around his neck, <laughs> right? That's the cultural picture of Jesus. The Lord Jesus He's gentle, he's meek, he's loving. He's also the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He has eyes like flames of fire, feet like burnished bronze, voice like the roar of many waters, a face like the sun shining at full strength. He's Christ on a white horse, faithful and true. Thank you, Anna. Christ on a white horse, faithful and true. Word of God, King of kings, Lord of lords, name above all names. And so Kevin was talking to us a couple nights ago about why we came to Oak City, to kick the devil in the face. Or I think he said punch the devil in the face, but we're going to kick him and punch him in the face. And now we're taking territory. And so that's what the whole purpose is here. And these beautiful people coming up and sharing and edifying all of us to do exactly that. So believers, be encouraged because we have resurrection power. We have the King of Kings, and that's who we're working for. Warfare. Guys are mean. Go for it. Come on. Are mean. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Well. Today, he was speaking um, this afternoon about 
uh, gentleman, Tim, was sharing about the things that are in the earth and taking our territory. And it really spoke to me about my city. And I encourage you to go, when you go home, you pray about your city. My city is important. What I do there, we have taken authority in this realm. I have always thought of it in, an, in, an, in the upper realm. I had never, ever, it can cross my mind to deal with anything in the earth. So I'm gonna go home and take care of business. There is a Walmart in my city that when we go in there, I swear we're on an ancient Indian burial ground. It is the most unrestful, awful place to go. And every time I go in there, I get the heebie-jeebies. We've had strange, strange, strange things happen. On the way home tomorrow, we're stopping by Walmart and we ain't shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just going to encourage uh, Dale and I coming up in just a couple of months. We'll be married 45 years. Come on. <laughs> and she is my sweetheart. We have gone through many a storm. Um, there's one thing that I learned early on. I, I wished I'd have paid more attention to it, but I did learn, and that was when the Holy Spirit is speaking to her, she hears accurately. And I've said this, I said this to our congregation many times. I have learned over the years, often, husbands, often, the Holy Spirit sounds a lot like my wife. <laughs> it has saved us a lot of heartache. We never make a big decision without consulting each other. We pray, we trust the Lord, we try to hear from heaven. We don't try to step out and do something on our own. Well, we have, don't do it. I don't <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> and I'm just here to tell you, um, we are the two most unlikely. unlikely to get married couple. I grew up on a large, big ranch and farm working I was there for over 20 years. She grew up in the city. My mama was a Texan. Her mama was a Bostonian. <laughs> um, Dale always complained about her, her speech, which I have, I'm very similar to her. She said she could jump rope through the words of my mom as she was speaking because she talks so very slow. <laughs> And the first time I met her, I couldn't understand her because she talks so very fast. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, I just want to encourage you this way. Um, husbands and wives, God's, God needs you. This, to me, this union right here is the most powerful union on the earth with God in the middle of it. It's true. Jesus said, if two of you on earth can agree as touching anything, it will be done. We have proven that to happen Absolutely. so many times. So I just wanted to encourage you in that. Let your wives be who God's created them to be. They will be a huge blessing to you. Hallelujah. Am I a mess? <laughs> Thank you for fixing me. <laughs> so, you know, what's been coming back up to me today is, you know, in, in deliverance school, we talked about Captain Kevin talked about Ephesians 1.18, which is that scripture where it says our hearts are flooded with light. And so I went back this evening, I was looking on my phone, I was using the Blue Letter Bible, which I think is a brilliant uh, app, and I was looking up the words, what is that word for flooded with light? And it's actually the word fotizo. And so what, what do you hear in that word, fotizo? Photo. It's what happens when we take a photo is it, the, you know, it opens up and it lets light in and it captures that element. Well, all week I've been, well, not all week, but this weekend I've been sitting on this row over here and I keep looking back. And if you guys turn back and look at these lights for a second, you can be flooded with light for a second. <laughs> you know, that's what's happening. But the reality is, you know, we talked today about the trauma. The enemy wants to flood us with trauma. He wants to leave an imprint. The Lord is wanting us to pray in 
and to walk in this revelation. He wants to, it, that word revelation is an uncovering. There needs to be an uncovering in our hearts of, what, of him and his character in us and through us, specifically in our soul. And so that's what, I, that's what I'd like to pray for tonight, is that we would break off that trauma and the things that we've already, we've already started to pray for and then invite the spirit, that revelation to come in. So Father, we ask you, Lord, to, to flood us with light right now, Lord, and imprint us, imprint our souls, imprint our minds with your son. Lord, make us look, sound, feel, and walk like Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I'm here in, uh, in the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. The hotter you get for Jesus, the hotter the fire is, the more people around you, family members and friends, you will lose. Some will not stand with you in the fire, but as you get closer to the Lord, you're going to get new family, a new family that's going to be stronger than you have ever imagined and love you more than you can ever handle. Trust in the Lord, fear not, look straight ahead in him. He will get you through the storm. Don't look to the right, don't look to the left. Look straight ahead at him, and he will get you through the storm. If the storm is not here, there is one coming. Do not fear, be prepared. It is coming, be prepared by trusting in him and not fearing. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but a peace, love, and a sound mind. He loves you. You are so loved by the Lord. He loves us all immensely. So take courage in that. Look straight ahead and take courage in Jesus Christ's name. Praise the Lord. You know, the Lord confirms his word with signs and wonders following. And um, angels hearken to the voice of his word. So I'm prefacing what I'm going to say because what I'm going to say is kind of intense, but I believe the Lord's having me say it because it ties in with everything that's already been said. But um, I believe the Lord's wanting me to say it because he's wanting to perform it. Okay, that's why he says, that's why he has us say things. And that's why sometimes you'll hear things a lot because he's wanting you to agree with it and so he can do it. But um, there's a, a word, uh, how to go on beyond betrayal. Okay, how do you love? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, right? But how do you actually love beyond betrayal? What happens when you're betrayed? Okay, Jesus says he committed himself to no man because he knew what was in a man. But yet, he so loved the world, God did, that he gave his only begotten son. So how do you live in that place where you, you love so much that you give, yet you don't commit yourself to any man because you know what's in a man? We're called to that high level, okay? And Stephen, while he was being stoned, okay, he said, forgive them, Paul. And Paul was the one that was heading that up. He was being stoned because of the power of God on his life, okay? And then Jesus, when he was being crucified, he said, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Okay, so in both those situations, because Stephen did the right thing in a horrific, horrific situation, being stoned to death, Paul was released from that judgment of what he was doing to Stephen, and he was raised up as a mighty man of God. Okay, because Jesus forgave on the cross, he was not able to be held in hell. And look at the fruit that he has. We're just, we're just like a little grain of sand compared to all the fruit. So um, that's really, you know, it says offenses are going to come. But don't worry when they come. It's worse for the person who they come through. Okay, but I believe that that's an assignment in this hour is that most tender place in your heart, the enemy's wanting to shut that down. And so I'm going to pray for anybody who can hear me right now, that when that place comes, that wound comes, that assignment comes to shut you down, that you're going to 
Cota paste lavondo borra basando coto ambaste kilama tamondo rabase elavundo itave esho avina kate elaku let that love flow halavono ramande we let the love of God flow Lord. We thank you. We yield to the love of God. We thank you. The love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. We dama la boto. Just pray in the spirit a little bit. Let that love flow. Shalamanda lo mondo borra, baravere bidiama sonto. Boveve vavaso kurama santeke ke teke tokoto mone. Breda so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You're not powerless. You forgive and you let that river, you let that love flow, okay? So that's a little exhortation for all of us, okay? So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we all finish our course with joy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, my goodness. I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to say? <laughs> you know what he wants me to share? that I'm Jewish and I was born in New York. I think I might be the first person known to my family that's saved. I share this because I'm gonna share a t short testimony and then I'm gonna lead us all in prayer for anyone in our family or anyone we know that does not know him yet because that scripture for <laughs> Chateau, la Cor <laughs> me and my household will serve the Lord. That means every one of my Jewish relatives will know the Lord before they leave this planet. And I'm going to share this really cool story. It's really cool. I had so many encounters with the Lord. He, oh gosh. So when I, I met the Lord when I was 21, the night I was going to take my own life, but I, I didn't succeed at that because that was several years ago. Supposed to make you laugh. And so, so 15 years later, I get diagnosed with MS, and then I go to this healing spa, which was not godly. Long story short, I'm there, and I have another encounter with Jesus Christ, okay? He literally showed up. That was when I started to actually live the word before I walked it. So in this experience, which would take about 10 minutes to go into, but I will do my best to bullet it. I cried out to him. He cried out to me. He said, open the door. So I lived that word where you actually walk through the door. And he was standing there. I thought I was going to go and disappear into heaven when I walked out into the heavens. And I didn't walk out into the heavens. I walked into his presence. And then the most beautiful thing happened. I turned around and I looked around and I saw I was in this room. This room was a prison. And the Lord said, why are you in there when you can be out here with me? He, hold, he held out his hand. And then the scripture, <laughs> I'm going to read it, because I lived the scripture. This is before I knew the scripture. The most powerful thing is when I started reading the word of God, I'm like, oh my gosh, I experienced that. That's true. That is so powerful when you know when you live the word of God, it's truly living and active. And so I don't know if I have to, have to find the scripture, but I also want to lead us in a quick prayer and believing that every person that we know <laughs> will come to know him, have an encounter with him, and they will be saved. But this scripture, behold, I have engraved you on the palm of my hand, and you, your walls continually before me. And then Isaiah 41, 13, for I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is who I say to you, fear not, for I am the one who helps you. I lived that very word. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to stand before you because he saved my soul. He rescued me from hell. He rescued me from darkness. And I get to stand here and proclaim the goodness of God. And I'm going to believe right now. I hope and pray you agree with me as I lend us into this prayer for believing for every person that we know that does not know him. We claim right now, Father God, Lord, every person that we know, every person that's breathing, Lord God, that's refused you, that's turned their heart from you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for showing up at the foot of their bed tonight, revealing to them who you are in spirit and in truth. So we thank you, Jesus, that not one person go home, not one person leave this earth, Lord, without the revelation of who you are. Give them that eternal moment, Lord, to say, yes, you are the Son of God. You are the one who died, who went to hell and came back for me. You died for me, and I love you, Lord, and I confess my sins, and I thank you, Lord, for you died and rose again so I can have eternal life, and I receive you into my heart. So I thank you, Lord, that every person that's watching this, that's maybe coming back to the Lord, I thank you, Father God, the fire of God, the fire of God, go out and go forth into Oklahoma City. So right now, in the name of Jesus, let OKC go on fire for Jesus!
Amen. Rasete ke ho ramahare be ki, broko ramamante ki rabase te ki rabahare mehe, broko ko ramate ki arabase, brahai ande oro base te ki ono mahai, briki urabase, brahai anamando kurabaki anamande, brase te ki uramahare be ki. I hear the Father saying, the torment is over, the season is done. The torment is over, and the season is done. I hear the Lord saying. Can you hear it? Because the rain is coming. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. I'm going to ask you to stand up in the presence of the Lord right now. I hear the Lord saying that there is a praise that is going to be coming off of your lips that is going to carry the authority of heaven and the dominion of the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. That there's going to be a sound that comes out of your mouth that is going to shift the nations and shift the generations. I hear the Lord that you've been told to shut up for too long. And the Lord says you're time and your season is now to open your mouth and be heard. I then heard the Lord just say to me that some of you feel like you have disqualified yourself because you fell too hard and you slipped too far away. And the Lord says that my hand is not too far to come and get you. My reach is not too short to come and lift you up. The Lord's saying right now in this moment that if you feel like you are disqualified from the calling that he has on your life, he said, I am the one who has called that upon your life and I will bring it to fruition. The Lord's saying if you will turn your heart in repentance to him right now and if you will look to the son, it will be done. I think the church has gone far too long with not allowing people to be vulnerable in the church. And let me tell you what, I will be one to be vulnerable. The warfare is real. It is not all butterflies and rainbows and when we leave this place and go home. When we have taken our place and our authority in Christ, the enemy gets so mad that he's going to come hard after you and after your kids. And the Lord's saying, your praise on your lips is going to shift every situation. There's been times when I'm at home and I sit at my piano and I say, Lord, I sing this song to him. I don't feel like praising you because it feels a little too hard. But I'm going to sing a song to you because you're worthy of it all. Because we don't always feel it. But like everyone said, it's not about our feelings. My feelings do not dictate my worship to the king. My feelings do not get to dictate how I'm going to respond in a situation. So the Lord's letting you know tonight, parents especially, it's time for you to take up your responsibility over your children. I feel it's so strong. You've allowed them to not just be your children, but you've tried to be friends with them. And the Lord said, I did not ask you to be their friend. I asked you to be their parent. We're allowing them to slip away from us. And the Lord's saying, it's time to reel them back in reel them back in you are not their friend this is the Lord because I want to be friends with my kids but the Lord's saying it's our responsibility in this season in this hour because the world is not going to raise your children to love the Lord the world is not going to raise your children to look to the son to look to the one who's going to fulfill the destiny in their life So Lord, right now, as a mother, I repent for every time I try to be friends with my children and not the authority gatekeeper that you've asked me to be. God, when I allow the doors to be open in their lives, knowingly and unknowingly, Lord, I repent before you right now. And Holy Spirit, I ask for wisdom and guidance and revelation. I look to the Father of all. And I say, Lord, give me understanding of how to be the best mother because you called me trustworthy. So, Father, as parents tonight, we say, come with your goodness and your mercy. We ask you to show us and to lead us, to guide us into all truth. God, that we would not allow the world to dictate how we parent our children, but God, we would look to you and to your word. Father, we tear down every high place that's been built up in our homes, knowingly and unknowingly. Those altars that may have been built there before we even got there, Father, we say come with your Holy Spirit and come and break them down. Because for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.
and great shall be the peace of my children and they shall fill fulfill every word that you've spoken about them God every page every syllable every vow that you wrote about them in their books they will fulfill it all and I break the spirit of depression over their lives in Jesus name father I say that they will see their identity and who they are in you God that they will look to you in every situation that they will turn to you in every moment God, and I just ask for a divine wisdom for us that we would know how to parent better, how to parent the way that you would. I'm going to share one more thing real quick. My kids know that when something happens or they're doing something they should not do, they know that I'm going to come to them and I come to them out of love. And my favorite thing is my daughter told my boys because I would go to the boys, I'd be like, hey, so the Lord told me, da 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 and they're like, and they're like, no, mom really hears the Holy Spirit. That's the way I want this whole room to parent, not just your children, but ask the Lord for divine insight for those people that he's called you to in your churches. We felt way too lonely for way too long. And the Lord's asking his bride to come together as family. Because we all say we want family, but we're afraid of the mess. And the Lord's saying if we would just get together and be in community, be in unity, and not worry about the mess, he'll take care of the rest. I'm telling you, the enemy is out there after you, but the one we serve is so much greater. He really holds all authority and all power, and he's given it to us. So what I started with, that that praise on your lips is releasing the authority of heaven. I'm telling you what, test it and see if you don't see those mountains move. If you don't see those things that you've been calling forth come into existence. All of it, all of it. Vulnerable enough to tell you the war is real. It is not pretty. But our praise and our worship before the king supersedes all of it. So get out of your feelings. Get out of your emotions. Get out of what you think it should look like or what you think it should feel like. Because the Lord is going to do something so extravagantly mind-blowing in your life and in your family that you're going to stand and say and have a testimony of look at the goodness of God. Only God could have done this. Only God. Every test is a testimony and every mess is a message of the goodness of God. So have, have a seat. Chris is going to get you fired up on your feet here in a minute. Um, so, so have you heard the verse, and I heard this verse for years, I never really knew what it meant, but that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's kind of one of those tough verses, like what does that mean? And so I'm going to give you part of my testimony, maybe we can kind of unlock that verse. Okay, so, so six years ago, you know, I found out I had a mass around my left kidney. And... Um, right after I found out, I met Kevin, actually came in town. Uh, I was sitting there trying to make all of these decisions with doctors. What are we going to do? He came to town in Dalton um, in a small building that he had prophesied. He was speaking in Mississippi. This couple, he called them out, just like if I picked out a couple right here, stand up and and said, you're going to build a building on your farm and use it for ministry. And so a year and a half later, he came to that building. He didn't know where he was coming. He didn't know it was that couple. And he walked into that building, and that couple was smiling and said, here's the building you prophesied. And, uh, <clears throat> and so the day before I was to have my left kidney removed, I'm in the shower. And, and I had always had an interest in healing. I'd read every book on healing. <clears throat> you know, know the verses you know, Isaiah 53, Matthew 8, 16, 1 Peter 2, 24, you know, Acts 10, 38, I've confessed it, I've seen healings in my family, and it's one thing to sit in a Bible study about healing, it's another thing we get the call from the doctor, okay, 
And <clears throat> so I'm confessing those scriptures. I know those scriptures for 20 years. And I'm in the shower and I have a vision. And I see a Christmas tree that's lit up. And if you remember the old kind of Christmas trees, the lights, if you, if you took one out, they all went out. And I saw a hand come down and reach. And it was the Lord's hand. He pulled the light out and all the lights went out. And he said, I broke the circuit of disease. Now, at, at the time, I didn't know that you, you referred to cancer as a circuit of disease. That's actually a medical term. And then I also didn't know that you took tests that lit up if you had cancer. So I get out of the shower, <clears throat> and at that time, some of you may have heard we, had a, we did have a Bible that the oil was flowing out of a few years back. Well, this was, this was before the oil started flowing out of the Bible. I looked in my, around my shower, my, and there's something running down all the walls in the bathroom. And I go over there and put my finger in it, and it's oil. See, the oil started flowing in homes before it ever flowed out of a Bible. And so what that was, <clears throat> faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema word of God, the quicken word. Okay, so when the, what you're looking for, if you're walking through something right now, and I was talking with this brother about walking through something, I don't care if it's your health, I don't care if it's finances, relationships, your children, okay, you do not flinch. You sow the word of God in you, and when you hear the rhema word, and, 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 and with it comes faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When you hear that, the Lord tell you what to do, the faith will come with it to fulfill it. Okay, so I had to go through a few surgeries. They told me I was going to have all kind of, you know, radiation, never had radiation, never had chemo, none of that. The doctors were just like, wow. And so <clears throat> seven months ago, I go in for a checkup. They say they see seven spots. That wasn't an easy visit. And so you know what? The arm of God. Y'all know it? What is it? The helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shoes of peace, belt of truth, shield of faith, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Except the sword's not right here in your hand. You know, you know in, in, in uh, Revelations where John has a vision of Jesus, where, where was, there was a double-edged sword. Where, where was his double-edged sword? In his mouth. Guess where yours is? <clears throat> so you know what I started declaring? The circuit of disease is broken. That was my rhema word. See, when you're walking through something, and you may not know every step, every step, Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. He only said what the Father said. And I'm going to tell you, God's got a word for you. You may not, I call it rhema peace. Sometimes there's two decisions. You, do I do this treatment? Do I do that? What do I do? Follow your peace. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Never make a decision out of fear. So... <clears throat> back to the, the testimony of Jesus. So, so what that means, what I feel like it means, I had a friend share this, is that when you share your testimony where Jesus has gotten you through something and you've overcome something, why is it the spirit of prophecy? Because I'm telling you he's going to do it in your life. I'm going to prophesy that into your life right now. He did it once. He did it for me. He's going to do it for you. He's done it before for you. Okay, and about six months ago, the Lord said I could give that word I got away. So if you don't, if you're battling something, you know someone, I give it away right now. The circuit of disease is broken. I bless you with that. I impart that in faith to you. By faith, you trust in his word. And when you hear his rhema, that unction from the spirit, you obey. Like Kevin said, a puff of smoke. Do it so quick. So we bless you. Thank you. All right, let's stand.
Myra, did you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> she didn't get me later for that. Well, I just want to share two scriptures. Um, and I want to encourage you with this, especially those of you that are watching at home. You're like, man, I can't be here. But I want to tell you the power of God is coming in to your living room. And I want my girls just to lift your hand. Okay. Those two girls, those are my girls right there. Okay. I want to tell you, they weren't always living for God. And I want to give you this hope. If you're a parent in this room and you're praying for your kids, and you're saying, Lord, what's going on? Get a hold of my children. I want you to remember those two girls right there because there was a time they weren't living for God. And me and my wife, we would go in the room and we would say, but as for me and my house, they will serve the Lord. And we would command the devils to go. We command the evil to go. Listen, I'll tell you a little secret too. We would anoint their pillows. We anoint the, the, uh, the doorknobs, everything. Everything they would touch, we anoint it. And I remember, one I remember one time, Jamie woke up. She goes, man, I woke up this morning. My hair was all sticky. And I was like, yeah, because we've anointed that thing with oil. But I just want to encourage you. Yeah, hey, listen, whatever you got to do. But I just want to encourage you, maybe someone at home as well, don't ever give up, right? We never give up. And Warrior Notes is not going to just, Kevin and Kathy are not going to just come into this city and abandon you. Listen, we're going to do this together. Amen? And listen, we're in covenant together, all right? And everything that we do, Warrior Notes, we're a team. It's not big man here, big little, no. We're doing this together as a team. And a scripture the Lord gave me right over there earlier was Hebrews 12 too, right? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay? It doesn't say, let us fix our eyes on the election. Let us not fix our eyes on the president, right? It says Jesus. I don't know what's coming, but it doesn't matter. Yes, we get out, we vote, we do our part. I'm not, talk I'm not saying don't vote. You do your part. But what I'm saying is, and you heard it through all the different people, we're not going to rely on our feelings. We're going to fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. No matter what comes our way, remember Peter, right? He, and, and Jesus like, you know, come to me. And, and Peter looks down and, and Jesus says, no, no, keep your eyes on me. That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep our eyes on Jesus. And the other scripture is Proverbs 3, 5, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. We're not going to lean on our own understanding. In all our ways, we're going to acknowledge him. And we're going to press in to the blood of Jesus, the cross of Jesus, and the covenant of God. Amen? So I just want to leave you with that. When you start feeling shaky and you're like, okay, what's going on? Keep your eyes on Jesus. David just said it. No matter what your sickness is coming upon you, you fix your eyes on Jesus, right? Because the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm going to leave you with